right? That's what it is. You've got to think about these emails like a dialogue, just a really slow conversation. And the great thing about it is that it's like you get to push the pause button on a conversation because when you say something, there's a delay and they send something back and you get the wonderful opportunity to respond, not react. We're Facebook living this for all the Genius Network members to watch this. This started yesterday with a conversation where Jennifer Hootie talked about how she uh, is, I guess, needing to, one of her most, her most important priority was to fill up this workshop that she was launching mm -hmm. and she, you know, had not been doing it. And then it started with, well, let's fill it up right now is let's what you right said. Now. That ended up leading into a discussion about just sending an email, which then led into a discussion about how to send emails that actually work. Yes. And so for those of you that don't know, me and Dean uh, do the I Love Marketing podcast. Everyone here knows because we've talked about it, but people that are watching. And Dean is also uh, you know, one of the smartest uh, marketing geniuses on the planet. Wow. And you've helped orchestrate some pretty smart stuff. And we've known each other for over 20 years. Yes. And what's similar is me and you actually talked about something, which I have money here. Yeah, me too. We, I have a $1 bill and a $100 bill. I have a $100 bill too. Which is great, because you rarely yeah. carry money. Yeah. Who did you borrow it from? Uh, no, I'm confiscating it. Okay, this it's is totally from, fake. <laughs> this is from John. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, if you have a dollar bill uh, in your pocket, uh, pull it out. Pull out a dollar bill. Mm. Pull out a dollar bill if you have a dollar bill. Okay. Just a one dollar bill, not a hundred. One dollar bill. We take Bitcoin, yeah. Okay, if you don't have any ones, then uh, borrow one from your neighbor if they have an extra one. If you're okay, if you're okay with that, this could this could uh, hurt later, but we'll see. All right, so uh, so I got a dollar. All right. So here's the deal. What I'd like you to do, I'd like you to look at the dollar bill. Okay, and if you're watching at home, do the same thing. Trust me, it, it's. It's more valuable if you experience this than just watch it and hear about it. So look at the dollar bill and think about all of the things you actually do in your business for money. Okay? Money, right? And what does this money represent to you? Freedom? Does it represent obligation? Does it rep represent complexity? Have you bought yourself joy with this? Have you bought yourself some misery? Do you spend it wisely? Do you spend it foolishly, right? Okay, and look at George. And whatever this represents to you, I want you to turn George away from you like this, okay? I want you to rip it in half. Just rip it in half, okay? Then I'd like you to put the two pieces together because we are magicians. We're going to show you a trick. Okay, watch this. Then rip it in half again, okay? Put it together again like this, right? And then put the, all the four pieces together sideways. Turn it sideways. Rip it in half again. Okay. Some have like eight. I right? would just like to say, it. any FBI agent watching okay. this, I had no yeah. foreknowledge of what was going All to right. happen. I'm so not participating. Put it in your hand, it. shake it up, count of three, yell money, confetti, throw it up. One, money, two, three, confetti. money, confetti. All right. Now, you can do it, could you, right? It's not my dollar. So oh, it's not his dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his dollar, right? How many of you ripped up? How many of you ripped up a neighbor's dollar? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, here's the deal, though. Here's the deal. You can bill me the extra dollars. Well, that's illegal. We just did. Yeah. So, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Is uh, that was really psychologically difficult to do. How many of you that was really difficult to do? Mm. Okay. How many of you just, again, could not do it? Could not do it, right? Okay, so here's the thing. You do it every fucking day. Like every day you're ripping up money and you're throwing it away. The way you think about your marketing, don't think about your marketing, thinking about team members, putting things in place, all of it. And you spent, invested, however you want to look at it, $25,000 to be here. A dollar in the scheme of things, right? Lunches, smoothies, coffee, all the different things that you just rip up money and throw it away. Or sometimes the money's really well invested. Now, can I borrow this dollar bill? The, <laughs> you okay. So, this is a hundred dollar bill, this is a one dollar bill. Now, if this I would, how many of you would have done it if I would have asked you to do it with a hundred dollar bill? Probably a lot less, right? But what's the difference between these two? 
Yeah. Yeah. Same paper, same ink, different message. Okay. So everything we do, like before, me and Dean learned marketing in the world of, you know, offline. offline. There was no, there was no online marketing, right? So we're it using costs paper real and money ink. to market. Right. So everything yeah. <laughs> we looked at, a yellow page ad, a magazine ad, a Valpak coupon, a direct mail piece of postcard. It was all real estate in the real estate. See, you know, if you go to Scottsdale, Arizona, and you like take a very high end area of Scottsdale, okay, let's say you're on the corner of Scottsdale Road and Camelback, mm -hmm. and you owned an acre, well, you can put a trailer there or you can build a beautiful building, right? So it, it depends on what you put on that real estate. Well, same thing with a website, social media, email, it's all real estate. And the message on that real estate, virtual or physical, has a lot to do with the value of it. So if you just promiscuously send out a email without putting any thought into it, you might as well just rip up money and throw it away. So when people say email is free, is it really? Because if you put the right message, you're gonna get much more of these $100 bills than these or what you just did. Now, the reason I had you rip it up is because I really, like whenever you're finding yourself making a decision, you should really think about, well, I'm just ripping up money and throwing it away. How much thoughtfulness can I put into this? So, uh, here, I'll give you the $100 bill back. Uh, he was probably worried, like, what the hell is he gonna do? <laughs> so, and this was, yeah, I'll give you this back too. Okay. Since you, I don't know what, anyway. So, for those of you watching at home, I don't know if anyone actually did it, but if you did, I'd love for you to post like a picture of the, because they're gonna come after you because you shouldn't be, <laughs> yeah, exactly. shouldn't be doing that. So, Here's what I like to do with, with that setup is I want to have a competition. I want to have a competition where all of you can make far more than what you invested in Genius Network just from what this will be the seed that we're going to plant. We're going to plant money seeds because you know what money is to me? Money to me, we talked about easy, lucrative, and fun. Fun tickets. Fun tickets. <laughs> That's what money is, fun tickets, okay? And, and if you invest the fun tickets in the right way, you're going to get more fun tickets. And if you invest it in creating value for other people, you're going to create fun for them. You're going to create joy. You're going to reduce suffering. There's all kinds of great things that come out of it, only to the degree that you effectively communicate and market that message. So, mm -hmm. Dean, uh, you stumbled across this thing called the magic nine-word email. Right. And we have the, this whole competition that we've laid out. We're going to pass this out to everyone in a little bit. But what I'd like you to do for everyone watching and for everyone here so they get uh, what is the um, method to... Uh, basically so, revive dead leads. Yeah, we'll that's start. the thing. Here's the thing is, has anybody been in business for more than 90 days? Just raise your hand right now. <laughs> okay, so you have leads that you've been generating. Have you had, uh, who's had inquiries or web forms filled out or responses to your ads? Raise those hands high. Okay, now here's what happens is most of the time, Entrepreneurs, online marketers, are mostly focused on how do we convert those leads as quickly as possible, right? How do we put them through our gauntlet series and how do we get them to buy right now and get what's our earnings per click on the things and we you know, pummel people to buy right now and then if they don't, we kind of relegate them to the affiliate list or we'll just pummel them with other people's offers just in case, right? But we don't treat them like they're good leads. Well, the foundational thing that drives all of it that I found was a study that showed that what happens when people inquire about anything. So what they found was, this is a company that on an enterprise level handles inquiries across all kinds of different industries. If you go to a trade show and you fill in a, uh, information or you go to a corporate website and you uh, ask for a catalog or whatever, this is a company that, that does that kind of um, um, fulfillment. And they handle millions of leads a year. And they do something that was brilliant. They follow up with people and do what they call did you buy surveys. So they'll take samplings from different times, 90 days, six months, eight, you know, nine months, all the way through. And what they found was that in calling these people and asking just one question, they'd say, you know, Joe, you came to the home show, you inquired about faucets, have you bought any faucets? Not, would you like to buy some faucets? Not, did you buy our faucets? Did you buy 
faucets, the category of what it was you inquired about. So what they found was that just over half of the people that inquire about anything will buy what it is they've inquired about within 18 months. But only 15% of them will do it in the first 90 days. So 85% of the value of a bundle of 100 leads today is longer than 90 days away. Most people's long-term lead conversion process is 90 days. By 90 days, they've fully given up on them. So what we found was that if we realize now that for whatever reason, people start shopping, researching, inquiring, investigating, whatever it is they're going to buy, months before they actually do it, what if we just went back to those people and instead of saying, did you buy, what if we sent an email to them and said, hey, are you still looking for a house in Georgetown? Or are you still planning a trip to Israel? Or are you still looking for stylish motorcycle jeans? Or like one guy, we had this, our favorite story ever of this, this guy's a yacht broker in Fort Lauderdale, had, uh, was in a you know, office like the old boys network. Those guys have zero tolerance for tire kickers. You know? They literally had a file in the office called Dead Leads, paper file printed out of all the web inquiries or whatever. And he started going through and just sending them a nine word email that said, are you still looking for a yacht? And when he got a reply back from a guy who's under contract right now on a $130 million yacht that's going to be delivered next year, and in the meantime, bought a $50 million yacht to tide him over until his $130 million yacht is delivered. All from sending a nine word email to dead leads. The same thing I mentioned the guy sent did uh, luxury trips or, you know, these are expensive trips, high-end trips to Israel. And he sent an email to people saying, are you still planning a trip to Israel? And re-engaged with all the people who had inquired last season. You, there's so many things that get in the way of somebody making a decision right now. But if you build this sequence into what you do, 90, every 90 days, just inquiring with people. Are you still looking for whatever it is that you do? It's like a magic trick. I've never had anybody who sends that to a group of people not be amazed by what happens. We had a, um, a job, uh, like executive recruiter, who had been sending jobs and sending jobs to people and no, you know, crickets, no, nobody replying to their emails. And she sent an email that said, um, um, are you still available? That was the email, right? Not anything about this particular job, but are you still available? Knowing that it's coming from uh, you know, somebody who they've been communicating with about a job, that got, it was like out of the woodwork. People come because it breaks that pattern of you just broadcasting information to people or sending group emails to people and makes it feel like you're only talking to them. You know, they call it the Starbucks test. It's like if you recognize, let's say that somebody came into um, your office or they came into an open house or they came in to see you for a consultation. It didn't work out at the time, but you recognize them and then you're in Starbucks and you see them. What would you say? It would be that same thing if you say them, if they came to an open house and you're saying, oh, hi, are you still looking for a house in, in Paradise Valley? That's how you would say it if you saw them at Starbucks. And it's the same thing about why these work. Because most people are sending emails with that approach where they walk into Starbucks, hop up on the table, start banging the cup and say, attention everybody, is anybody in here still looking for a house in Paradise Valley? Because if any of you are, you start speaking to the crowd rather than speaking to one person. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video and I wanna let you know that I have a new book that's come out and if you'd like to get it absolutely free, there's a link below in the description or you can wait till the end of this video or you can simply go to joesfreebook.com and you can get a copy there. 
That's what we really have with email, is this ability to engage one person at a time. It's a very intimate form of communication. If you treat it like a dialogue, where you're sending something, just imagine that scenario. You walk into Starbucks, you see somebody that you recognize, you look them right in the eye, and you say, hey, are you still planning a trip to Israel? And you're looking right at them, and you don't say anything else. How awkward would it be for them not to say something? <laughs> right? That's what it is. You've got to think about these emails like a dialogue, just a really slow conversation. And the great thing about it is that it's like you get to push the pause button on a conversation because when you say something, there's a delay and they send something back and you get the wonderful opportunity to respond, not react. And that's the brilliance of you can wordsmith and make sure that you're saying it the right way, saying the right thing to people. But being real um, makes a big difference. So that's, we, you know, we've seen it happen again and again and again, and we decided we'd have a little contest to see Let's pass this out. what can happen if you just don't overthink it and send an email to, your, uh, to the people who you've maybe been in contact with and it went quiet, um, you know, that whole thing. You were sharing with me, can you share his uh, result from... You told me last night that you sent a. Uh, oh, can we, can uh, we get, get a, him mic? a mic? Yeah. Too? But while we're doing this, you know, this literally is something you could do. While you know, you could do it right away. There's no no uh, no delay in this. But Sasha, what happened? Because yeah, you know, let's make a point. Uh, so yeah. you heard about this in the morning, and you just did it. As did Jennifer Hootie. So everyone here, the point behind this contest. You've been given enough information just by hearing about it, and on the Facebook Live link, which this is on, we'll actually, this is going to be posted also. We want people to actually do it, but you just did it right away, so this is not... Yeah, so I sent it out, I sent out an email last night uh, before I went to bed, and uh, woke up this morning with an $18,000 uh, coaching client. Nice. And uh, so all I that said helps. to him, yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh, <laughs> so I basically sent a message to him and it, in the subject line, it said, are you still joining us? Uh -huh. and, the, and the reason for my email wasn't to get him to sign the contract, but to let him know that we have an upcoming event yes. and I didn't want him to miss it yeah. in April. Mm -hmm. And uh, he signed up right away. That's Love so it. great. Love it. There's the thing, whenever somebody's oh, on Jennifer the fence, oh, Jennifer, Jennifer Hootie. come on up. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we'll put you on Facebook Live here because I uh, want to hear since yesterday where this all started. Yes, I was moving. I'm all moved now. Oh, great. Oh, good. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I got 23 people so far and four sales of the workshop. A lot of conversation that what I did is I just went into the support email. <laughs> yes. and I so they're 3000 each, right? 3000 So you each. made $12,000 in sales, and yesterday it was like, my priority of being here at Genius Network is I just really got to focus on this thing. Yeah, yeah. So that shit works. Wahoo! <laughs> Wahoo! It works. That's and so great. I went in this morning, like as my movers were there, I just sat and went through my inbox and sent the nine word mm -hmm. email to everyone that's gone mm. kind of quiet on specific things, especially with Cameron's here. Yeah, with um, Vivid Visions, you like Cameron will make intros to Vivid Visions and sometimes the people won't respond and I'll follow up a couple of times. So I just went to all of those just being like, hey, are you still interested in creating your Vivid Vision? So, wow. I, nice. yeah. I love it. That's, yeah. so, that's so cool. We shared, you know, this, that process that you um, used, just the fact that you took action mm. on it. It's really, you know, there's, that's what happens. You just send it and it happens, you know, Ilko. So first time I did a breaking room with Dean the and um, so I sent out the email to my list and I got like 2,000 responses. And, but I committed to answering all the emails because I want to learn, I want to uh, implement. And, um, and then I got this email from a guy, it was a long email about whatever it was. And, uh, and his name, he signed off with his name, Dave. And then he did a PS. And the PS was PS, sometimes I wonder if you still know who I am. And I was like, Dave? And when I was young, when I was 10 or 11 years old, I had a, a best friend, and his name was David, David. 
and uh, you know we were together all the time and then one day to the next he disappeared like he literally disappeared he moved because there was an issue with his father or whatever and I never heard from him again I was always wondering what happened to David <laughs> and then I got this email and then we reconnected we had dinner and he, com he comes to my seminars and stuff and all because of a nine word email so <laughs> That's you know, I guess it lives up to how to revive dead leads, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's really That's so great. And you find your that. father and your mother. No, okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll do yeah. a couple over here, and then we're gonna we'll, we'll read the the how the contest is gonna work. Okay. I have a question. Uh, one of the things we focused on to improve our email deliverability is if people don't open our emails at all for 90 days, we remove them off the list. We keep marketing them f forever mm -hmm. if they open the email, but if they don't open the email, I want to ask, because this is such a pattern interrupt, is it actually worth taking the risk of putting those people back on the list? Yeah, of course. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, there's the thing is that just because they don't open your email doesn't mean they didn't see it. How many times do you, you know, when you look at it right now, that email is delivered into the same stream, because that's, let's face it, that's how we're reading emails now is on our phones. So we're streaming through, right. and that email is in that same stream where their mother sends emails. Mm -hmm. And we're in promotions. their mom gets a 100% open rate, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what other thing that happens is if you can use a nine word email the morning after somebody <laughs> opts in, the, and you get somebody to reply to your email, guess where you get right. automatically whitelisted because, right. oh, this is somebody that they know. Mm -hmm. So imagine we send sometimes morning mm -hmm. after emails, nine word emails that get a 40% response rate. So, you know, you're getting lots of opens, but getting, um, you know, really great engagement. You know, and that goes a long way. Related to this subject, um, you know, I feel like all the email servers are cons constantly getting better at blocking. You know, sure. now like my Office 365 has a clutter mm -hmm. and a spam, you know, all that type of stuff. What techniques are you or anybody in the room finding to, or, or what company, I guess, to find, to maximize the delivery? Mm -hmm. Well, Is can there, I say something too, yeah. and you respond to that? Brian Kurtz and I are going to do actually a conversation about post office but if you can get their phone number to do nine word emails via text to get their physical mail to do nine word emails physical so it's not just nine word emails mm -hmm. nine word mail it's nine word messaging okay or just so that's one thing getting other forms of ways to communicate with them because what this has been done with postcards mm -hmm. okay this has been done with text and so what we're actually doing right now with Randy and what we're going to build in with Scipio and stuff is ways to actually automate and create elf marketing on every le level that one can I mean you can do this on Facebook I mean there's all mm -hmm. kinds of different ways but mm -hmm. uh, one other thing I'm not uh, I'm only gonna say this worked for me I use the version of a nine-word email and I this thing really interesting knowing the age of my audience I used courier font which sounded really mm -hmm. strange old-school typewriter response rate was 20% higher mm -hmm. on the email back and I'm not sure why I've talked to you about that as well and I believe that there's something in there, like somebody actually typed it. It goes back to childhood mm -hmm. or nostalgia. Have you ever tried that before? I have. I mean, so we use courier. Yeah, because it's a weird. Lot of those. It, what the response I got was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying that too. But the whole thing, anytime, like that's why I always send things that are not like HTML or beautiful looking or it looks fancy like it did it in a typewriter. fonts. That's exactly right. It looks like. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So. Just want to throw yeah. that out there. Give it a shot. Yeah. Now, and wait, to answer his question about email deliverability, mm -hmm. is there anything else you want to say to that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, you know, the functional deliverability, what really helps is as if you can get engagement early, if you yeah. get a high level of people opening, you know, the highest open rate is going to be on the first email that you send. If you can the next morning get another open and a reply, you're like establishing yourself as, oh no, these are real, um, these are real emails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really want to hear yeah, from this yeah, person. I, my, uh, give them the mic, uh, grab the mic back if you could. Where, where I'm finding that is not necessarily the open rate, it's that the servers, mm -hmm. you know, like Microsoft and stuff, they change, mm -hmm. they change the rules. And so mm -hmm. say, um, you know, you're you're sending out the nine word email, mm -hmm. but it's going out to 250 people. Yeah. So now all of a sudden the person doesn't even know because it ends up in their clutter. Yeah. So what I, you know, like we use uh, marketing cloud off Salesforce. I'm wondering, does anyone 
in here use a vendor that is hip to the changing landscape of where you where your emails are going into the, where they're ahead of some of that stuff or <laughs> yeah and, and here here's here's the thing too and i'm almost reluctant to say like because i do know companies that will yeah. have much higher <laughs> deliverability but they're it's always changing yeah. and so the moment we say this is the company then all of a sudden again i will go back to what dean says the the more the quicker you can get someone to engage with you earlier on the more likely and you can get them on different lists. You can be communicating to them in different ways because for the most part, if they're really engaged, even if they're, like even to get them to respond back, yeah. you know, is going to, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a much, it's a much different relationship than if they're on a list. That's why I've always, you know, I mean, I worked a lot with Dan Kennedy in, in the, I mean, for the first nine years of my business, I had Dan write a lot of my sales copy. And Dan, of course, is, is brilliant. He uses terminology like the herd. And I, it's like, you know, it's like cattle. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people you have a relationship with are not part of a mm -hmm. herd. You know, they're people you have a relationship with. So it depends to what, you know, just how well you, uh, you know, you curate those, those relationships. So what, what Dean's saying here is just, it's, it's like, it, it's, it's game changing stuff. When you start thinking about, you know, the one size fits all, your, your analogy of the guy in Starbucks is mm -hmm. perfect. Um, you know, this has been going, even in direct mail, which we'll talk about later, yeah. we were trying to do this. It was so freaking expensive. That's why email is the killer app, because it is a lot cheaper, but it's not cheaper for the sake of being cheaper. Right. And it's not just that you can make 100 versus a dollar, but every communicator, Gordon Grossman taught me this. He was the, 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 the architect of the Reader's Digest. He said, anytime you send a message to somebody that doesn't get open, doesn't get responded to, whatever, um, you are decreasing response for the future if they, you have alienated them in some way. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the alternative to that is make sure you're talking to people the right way. There's a direct marketing rule of thumb that goes back forever that your best list, like in subscription marketing, is your expire list. Your ex the people that used to subscribe to your news, we had, we had a list of like millions of people who subscribed to Bottom Line Personal. We had millions of people who stopped subscribing to Bottom Line Personal. We did one test, talk about a nine, nine this is our nine word direct mail. But we basically had a, um, a, a campaign and all we did on the outer envelope, we didn't send them a whole direct mail piece, that was 24 pages long. We just sent them a very simple letter, very simple envelope. We had four words on the outer envelope. We want you back. 30% mm. left. Mm -hmm. In direct mail. I mean, we're talking, you know, from a one and a half, a 1% response. Yeah. You know, these are big numbers. Yeah, there's So that was like, you know, that was like, you know, Dean, the Dean's thing is exponentially better because it's email, it's cheaper, it's, but you, the, it's just so important to, one size fits all creative. Mm -hmm. How could you do that now with email, with what we have available to? I, mean, I, I, I know I sound like you know, the wondrous you young man. Who, what? We want you back is the first thing is, well, I must have been with them I know before. you already. We say that, yeah. Well, we say to somebody, are you still interested? Exactly. Say, and, are and you I, still looking? It implies that I know that you were looking right. for faucets. And, and yeah. it, the irony was that instead of spending in direct mail, we were yeah. spending like, Four hundred dollars a thousand for like a magalog. That piece cost us like fifty dollars a thousand. Yeah. So a cheaper mailing, thirty percent lift. That that worked. That scales. That's awesome. That scales. Awesome, awesome, mm -hmm. Alex. And then give this back to Jennifer. Then we're gonna uh, do the contest and then wrap this bad boy up. Yeah. So something I wanted to add real quick. There are some tools that log in into a uh, Gmail account or your corporate Gmail account. And as long as you're careful with the limits, so you're not sending more than so many emails per day, obviously you can create multiple Gmail accounts. That one of the tools, QuickMail, right? That's what we use, QuickMail. So you lo it logs into your Gmail account and you take a lit list of leads and instead of using your email marketing solution like HubSpot, you basically send out those emails through a personal, personal email, right. Gmail. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Two other things on that. Um, what we found to work well is when someone opts into your list, a lot of times people actually put the lead magnet or whatever it is on the next, on the thank you page. But then that basically tells them to stop and they've gotten what they wanted. So instead, we'll always put the lead magnet in the very first email. So it's, say if they're asking for a cheat sheet, we don't put the cheat sheet on the thank you page. The cheat sheet comes in the first email because that's what they wanted. And then in that first email, something we found to work really well is asking them the question. So we'll say, P.S., um, out of curiosity, what's your number one problem when it comes to 
blank when it comes to email marketing, when it comes to copywriting, when it comes to weight loss. Um, that's actually what I did like years ago when I was in the fitness space, which got me into email marketing and copy was from cold traffic, cold Facebook traffic, I would ask a question in that very first email and I would get like paragraph responses from people saying, oh my gosh, my number one problem is this. And then I would respond to them um, and say like, oh, well, why don't you check out this article? This will be really helpful for you. And I wouldn't try to sell them right away, but I'd respond and just start helping them with whatever they said. That's what Ryan Levesque does with his buckets, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Message to Let's do this because we have to do the contest for timing, and then uh, and, and then you can spend that. And then Dean will make himself available for personal one-on-one -on -one calls for the next month yeah. for for everybody at Genius Hour. Um, so, if you in front of you is this, this will also be on the Facebook page. It says, "Here's the Genius Network nine-word email competition." So, what it is, we're going to have a fun competition, easy, lucrative, and fun for Genius Network members to see how much business you can generate specifically from reviving dead leads, okay? Now, you can use this on any leads, but let's just look at it this way, by sending a nine word email. To have a chance of winning, you simply share your experience, including your financial results in a short video submitted to Genius Network. Completion ends May 1st, okay, of this year. Why? We're, going, we're doing this to give you yet another reason to revive your dead leads by implementing the powerful marketing strategy of the nine word email. Four steps to compete in the contest. Step one, send a nine word email to your list of dead leads to promote your product or service. Send a copy of the email to contest at geniusnetwork.com. Contest at geniusnetwork.com. And you'll officially be entered into the competition. Step two, crush it for 45 days. Get all the results you can you have until May 1st, 2018 to generate business directly attributed to the nine word email. The, that's, the contest period ends on that date. Step three, you're gonna record a video explaining what you did and the results you obtained uh, directly and indirectly from sending the nine word uh, email associated with this competition to your leads. Now the video is gonna be three minutes, which is it says in step four, submit the video no longer than three minutes by May 10th. Okay, so circle that date. It's my birthday. May 10th, yep, <laughs> Dean's birthday. Perfect. To contest at geniusnetwork.com. And then, because we want you to spend your entire birthday watching videos, yeah. basically. <laughs> All right. Uh, I go to the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Well, that's uh, what we should do, rent the big screen and play them up on there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how your entry will be judged. So here's how we're going to judge it. There will be a panel of four judges uh, who will watch and judge each video. 50% of the judging will be based, uh, will be on the results you achieved, and 50% of the judging will be based on how well you tell the story of what you did and how you benefited, very <coughs> much in your ability to articulate it. <coughs> the contestant who gets the highest cumulative judge, uh, judge's score on their video will be the winner. The prize is going to be the winner of the contest will get an additional seat in the Genius Network annual event, which will take place November 2nd and 3rd and 4th, 2018, which will be here in Phoenix, Arizona. And that he or she may provide to a friend, family member, or business associate. Now, in the, so what this means is uh, someone that, uh, before we wouldn't let people bring a guest uh, unless the guest was like a, a spouse or a, a business uh, partner, associate, but in this particular case, if you win, you can bring whoever you want, all right? Uh, so that prize is valued at $10,000. The rules, the winner must be a current Genius Network member, including at the time of the 2018 event, in order to claim the prize. Each contest entry, including the video, becomes the property of Genius Network, because if you're going to submit these things, we're going to need to be able to share them, and may be shown at Genius Network, Genius X, or anywhere else, online or offline. Uh, but if you actually win this thing, uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of other people hear about what it is that you're selling too. Mm. So, and anyone that does that, depending on how it is, will probably share these videos, which would be cool. So it becomes exposure Everybody for what it is it that you're doing. And it becomes a whole crowdsource way of strategizing this in a big giant way. So, Such a great idea. So what do, you, what do you have to say about why should someone do this contest other than the fact that they're going to make a bunch of money? I was going to say, what other reason do they need? If, there's, if that's not enough, I don't know what else can help them. <coughs> Spiritual, yeah. So how many of you, by it's show of words. hands, are in for sending a nine-word email? Raise yeah. your hands. Okay, awesome. So uh, do it. Is there any final questions that you may have 
that you need to know something so you feel that you are ready to actually do this. Uh, let's send it over, Jonathan. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> nice one. Uh, sorry to be a pest with all the questions. I want to ask how important is it actually for you to personally answer all of them? Because we were doing something a lot like this, uh -huh. and it just it cluttered my inbox so much sure. that I that first delegated it, yeah. and then we turned it into a survey. So enter the email barista. Okay. That's the, that's the whole thing. Once you've gotten, once you know what is going to happen, once you know how you're going to reply, and you've written the actual words that you would reply, if you send a message to somebody, and in the initial one, the message, if you say, are you still looking for a house in Georgetown? The reply is gonna come back either yes or no, or we found one, or whatever it is. But there's gonna be a very small band of two or three possible um, responses that are gonna cover 90 plus percent of the responses that you get. There may be a couple of outliers, but what's happening is you're gonna get uh, a very narrow band of, of uh, variation in the response. If you write what the message you wanna have go out to them is, and then you can save it as a copy chunk, here you go, we've got this asset, take this and insert it here, it's really beyond what an artificial intelligence could do, but it's not at all beyond what any individual who runs the espresso machine at Starbucks couldn't handle, right? That's why we call them email baristas. That's about the level that you have to, to have, right? If you've ever seen that show on the Discovery Channel, uh, how it's made. Have you guys seen that show where they narrate all the manufacturing processes? Everything that's automated, everything that can be automated is automated. When there's something special that a human could do better, they always say a worker takes it and does whatever, inspects the bottle for this and replaces them. They never say, you know, Betty, who's been with the company for 15 years and has three kids and likes to go bowling. It's not that, it's a worker because they know that as soon as Betty can't show up for work, they're gonna put Veronica right there. And Veronica's <laughs> gonna pick up the bottle and do the thing. So anybody can have it. We, we sent out that nine word email with Alan Christensen. He had 4,400 replies to it and had eight email baristas sending out the responses to everybody, right? So I look at it that my whole world changed when I expanded my definition of automation to include human automation. My definition of automation is if I'm not doing it, it's automated. That's great, right? I'm just using other people and technology to do what I would do if I could count on me to do it. Right. Yeah. And by the way, if you get an email that someone's inquiring back that they are interested, this is like someone has the opportunity or desire to give you money. Mm -hmm. And that's a much different level of excitement of response. Because if, if everyone had a whole list of responses expecting a response is yes, I'm interested, and they want to send you money, that's much different than a cluttered up email box. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason that someone doesn't want to do that, then promote yourself to the head of the sales prevention department and make sure that your focus is to figure out how to yeah. not make money. The important thing is to think like a chess master and think that this is two or three moves ahead, that somebody's gonna respond and say yes, what would you say if they popped their head back in your office and said, hey, I was in here a few months ago and I'm uh, looking for faucets again or whatever, what would you say to them then, right? Think about it two moves ahead. Where are you ultimately going to uh, take this, you know? Yeah, and what I'll say finally is that me and Dean have done full-length podcast episodes on ilovemarketing.com. If you literally go to ilovemarketing.com and type in uh, nine-word email, magic nine-word email, you can listen to me and Dean going over example mm -hmm. over example of this is what it should say, how you should say it, how to send it, answering almost every question you could think of. This is one strategy that has made our listeners millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so whatever, I, I think you've been, you pretty much get it and you know the, the whole thing, it's really now up to you just to, just to send it. So we'll take, uh, we'll take one more comment or a question from Todd and then we're... Question, are the results based when you say they're, they're on what you achieve? Is that financial achievement, how much you raise, or is it on 
how many people engage with you? How, how, are, we, how are we looking at well, that? Well, you know, we're going to, between all the judges, we, we'll look at that and say, you know, it, it doesn't need to be who makes the most money because everyone's going to have different size lists and everything. Uh, a lot of it could be percentages. It could be conversion. Uh, you know, half of the judging is going to be based on the essay. Looks, I mean, talent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who has the longest so, lifetime value yeah. to us as a genius <laughs> network member? I mean, you know, thanks. Yeah, we're, 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 we're probably going to discriminate a lot during uh, dur no. So, yeah, we're trying to make this one real simple, but, you know, I mean, just produce the best results you can. And if for some reason yeah. along the way we find that to be a complex thing, which, you know, I'm not sure, uh, we're just trying to get this thing going, we'll, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll put you in the second running or something. There we go. Uh, yeah. What's that? We're just game. Gaming. We're gaming. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, gaming. we're trying to put you <laughs> in. Together, all of us. Yeah. Yeah, because look, look, yeah. if everyone, you know, not everyone's going to do this. For everyone that raised their hand, there's going to be a handful of you that actually will do it. I mean, I've done a ton of contests over the years. Who already what, knows? Who's, who raised their hand and they know deeply down that they're probably not going to do it, actually? Yeah, who? Is that? <laughs> yeah, so, so, no, but here, here's the thing, though. See, what, what I want is I want Genius Network to be a 10 times multiplier for everybody. Yeah. Okay, and there's lots of strategies, there's lots of things, not just, you know, for the first eight years of Genius Network, when, and some of you that have been in the group for a while, uh, I would start uh, the meetings and I'd say, okay, you know, for new members, if you don't make at least 10 times your return of $25,000 investment, which is, you know, $250,000 within the first year of being in Genius Network, um, I don't want you to renew for the second year. And I would be, with the caveat, like, I want the money. Yes, I would like the 20, I'd say, this is a business, right? I mean, I, I, I wish I could do this for charity. And actually, I would do this for free, even if I didn't mm. get paid for it, but it would be a different dynamic. You did, and I would, years. Yeah, I did do it for years. Yeah, that's, that's what, right. what ended up becoming. Uh, and I would say that, and then I started having people come up to me and say, you know, I make really good money. I, I actually don't come to Genius Network because I'm trying to make more money. It actually mm -hmm. helps me get my life together. I like all the other stuff that you focus on that is not money related. And it actually started shifting a lot of my thinking. So I spend less time talking about that. But still, the reason we do $250,000 ideas, the reason we focus on that is because I don't ever want someone to say, you know, I spent $25,000 and I didn't make any money. I mean, I want people to get a 10 times return on this because I want it to be like, I want the money aspect to be a no-brainer. I mean, I want this to be a tribe of tribal leaders. I want the focus to be on how to not just make more money, but to make elf money, you know, easy, mm -hmm. lucrative, and fun. I want to take away the suffering and the angst. I want to connect people with awesome people. So that's not always about money. In a situation like this, if everyone does this contest, we're now getting all of this data. We're getting all of these recipes. And if we do this as a group, it's just going to keep improving, keep improving. And so that's what I'm trying to build into the, you right. know this whole uh, and, and this is a perfect simple way to do it. I mean, there's not an easier marketing strategy that I'm someone can test. I'm always amazed at all the different businesses that it works for. Like we yeah. see it. I've had people from with the Taekwondo studios with um, a fishing lure uh, store. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different things that it works for. It's amazing. It, and I'll tell you, like if you use this on offline things, like me and Brian mm. Kurtz in a little bit, we're going to do a conversation up here. Uh, and and what, what I can envision is after we do phase one of this magic nine word email, there's going to be a handful of people here that will use it, not just on email, they're going to use it in different things. And I'll tell you, there have been Genius Network members that are strictly digital or online marketing that we have gotten to do direct mail that have literally doubled their businesses just by taking the same messaging, just by adding that. And they're like, you know, I want to, I want to grow and expand my business, but they're always in the same channel. And then you show them a, d a different channel, then all of a sudden it's like, wow, they dramatically grow their business, they grow their retention, they grow the, the frequency, they grow the referrals because they're, they're implementing these things. So this is just one thing to get you started but the strategic byproducts that are going to come out of this, the dialogue that you're going to have, is going to lead to all kinds of things that you won't even know until you actually do it. So it's just, we're just trying to encourage you at a much greater level to do it, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you yeah. will. Awesome. Give it up for Dean Jackson. Yeah, Thank you. Okay, I hope you found that video awesome and useful. So if you want to get a free copy of my book, I want you to click here. And if you want to watch some more videos that will be useful and awesome, click here. Go ahead, get her over here. Do it now. Come on. Thank you. Watch him.